Welcome to the Young Crones Cafe, where you can get a magic brew full of all sorts of information, both witchy and practical. Grab a cup of coffee and join us. I'm Elizabeth, a wordsmith. And I'm Dave, a modern-day sage. We are going to talk about various witchcraft and life topics from a slightly more mature perspective, at least most of the time. Thanks for joining us. Today's metaphysical kernel of thought is living with the unknown and unknowable. Most of us who walk the spiritual path of witchcraft are inveterate students. There always seems to be some subject or another that catches our attention and calls us to read everything we can get our hands on about it. We then integrate what we have learned into our spiritual practice if possible and try out ways to work with the knowledge we have acquired. This in turn sparks another area that catches our attention and off we go again. Gaining knowledge is a vital part of spiritual growth and development. There are always going to be things that are unknown to us. Whole areas of studies may never cross our radar, or they may be things we want to learn about but haven't gotten to yet, or don't have the time to devote studying them. There are times when we feel that the unknown looms large in our lives. These feelings are natural and part of being human as well as being a witch. If you genuinely want to grow spiritually, you need to continuously work to create and keep balance in as many aspects of your life as possible. There are always going to be areas of study that are unknown to you. You cannot study to the exclusion of the rest of your life. Your scope of knowledge should continue to grow, but there are always going to be areas that remain unrevealed to you. No human is ever going to know everything just because of our scope of knowledge about ourselves and the world around us continues to expand at an astonishing rate. Another thing that humans struggle with is the concept that some things are simply unknowable. No matter how many facts we gather, information we acquire, or skills we develop, there are still things for which we never get an explanation that we comprehend. Quantum physicists have been trying without success for years to figure out how the universe creates and, and recreates itself constantly. None of us understands the existence of evil in our world or why bad things can happen to good people. The fact that racial, ethnic, and religious intolerance never completely disappears from humanity baffles many of us. There are diseases for which there are no cure, of which the current pandemic is an example. There is no definitive explanation about why each of us has a unique personality within our family of origin. Like us on the path, you may have used divination to try to understand a situation or get answers to a question, only to receive the answer that you must wait or that there is no answer to receive. This is the universe's way of reminding us that there are things we are not yet ready to know and that there are things that will remain beyond our knowledge permanently. Part of our practice involves working to accept our humanity, even with the powers of a witch at our disposal, because it is amply demonstrated all the time how much is unknown and unknowable around us. Living with the unknown and unknowable. Now, there's a topic for the week. I'm going to interrupt for just a moment. Go ahead. Folks, it's been a crazy week. Elizabeth had a fire at her house. Yesterday. They're living turn the grandkids out of a motel and things are a little bit chaotic so if you happen to notice a little different in the the sound background today we are recording this one um live in Susie's old office so uh um just wanted to put that out there that elizabeth could use all, all the energy people can set i appreciate that thought yes that's that's one of those unknowable things or un Willing to accept the well, unknown or unknowable? Well, and it takes me right into this topic because part of the reading on the topic talks about, you know, the presence of evil and, and more specifically bad things happening to good people. And I have known you long enough that I, I sort of consider you to be like a, a living, walking, talking, breathing example of the trials of Job. Beginning to feel um, that way, yes. And at the same time, a hero, because I see what a remarkable job you do through all of these crises and everything else to take care of those grandkids. So They're good. the unknowable part of, of what we're talking about this week is how do we reconcile such terrible things happening in such sequences to people that practice such great energy habits and 
do we know or can we know what causes that in our humanity? I don't think we can. That's part of the conundrum of the unknown and the unknowable. I mean, if we dial it back to the we talk about the unknown. Hey, now you had to look up the word in veteran students. We are, con- yes. we, we are constantly striving and being and... I think it's one of the reasons I became a witch in the first place, because I like knowing stuff. Well, and there's so much stuff out there to read and know. Oh, please, yes. Okay. And we can bury, we can deep dive yep. off the cliff sometimes, you know. And I know when I first started studying witchcraft, I read everything I could get my hands on. And this was before the days of the internet, so it was actual books, and yep. I had stacks. And I read everything I could find, and I found stuff I agreed with, and found stuff that even I could tell as a rank beginner didn't know their ass from the hole in the ground mm-hmm. kind of stuff. So you get that you learn to discern, I think, as part of your learning. I hope. You know that that makes a very very good point because especially when you've read kind of a broad range of of different style authors, you develop sort of a special set of critical thinking skills in that everything that you're reading, you're sort of picking it apart and plucking out those parts that you want and setting the rest aside. So you really are sort of actively critically thinking about the material that you read, whether it's someone else's spell or someone else's dogma or even looking at other religions. No. Or even my own dogma. <laughs> How does it match up to against everybody else's? And does mine still hold true based on what I'm reading now? And you can go down rabbit hole after rabbit hole after rabbit hole. And you have to accept as part of that that there is always going to stuff you be stuff you don't know about. And I think that's one of the things that is one of my own personal hot button crazy points. Because I want to know. Sure. And damn it, I should be able to know everything. I don't know where I got that idea from. That's just one of those perfectionist pieces, I think. It is part of your character, though, because even through the years, some of the technical stuff that I have done for you, you've always wanted to know how it works. You've just always struggled with the fact that you knew you would never have the time to learn it to to the level that would satisfy you wanting to understand it. Yeah, I, I, yeah, and you just realized you did. You had a finite number of hours. Yeah, and, and that's where the critical thinking, I think, comes in, too, is I have to pick and choose what, what we're I'm going to learn about. What to learn about now that I will get the most benefit out of later sometimes. Because I could literally find a book on any topic in the world if I wanted to. You know, they're out there or on the internet. I I can find shit. But do I have time to read it? And is it really going to be beneficial to me as a person, to me as my practice, to, like you said, helping the grandchildren, making our lives better so that there's a lot of stuff that I want to know about that just because I want to know that I don't have time for. And I have to accept the fact that there's going to be stuff out there that I will never get around to learning about because of the infinite limit of time. Well, and and I also think mankind in general, there are things that will always be unknowable, either because we don't have the capacity to know or we're simply not meant to. I think so. Um, We're not the creator of the universe, so we cannot understand everything about that process. We can find out bits and pieces of it because we have astrophysicists and astronomers and people just want to know. I want to figure it out. And so we can get bits and pieces of that, but I don't think we're ever going to have the complete picture. We don't have, for one of the better words, the mental capacity to comprehend it. Or the math or the language or, or the, the, the symbolic. Yeah, absolutely. All of that. Stuff. Um, I, I guess one of the things that I was just thinking, thinking about is if we take this whole knowable or knowledge or whatever, knowable and unknowable, let's just as a word exercise, let's come up with one word other than knowable to talk about all of the knowledge that could be known. Yeah. And then one word that sums up all of the unknowable. Okay. To me, the unknowable, or one of the better word, is the motivation of the creation of the universe. 
that's all the unknowable stuff. Because that means that things are going to constantly grow, change, develop, and we don't know how it how it happens. That things are going to constantly is we live in an expanding universe. That sure, means sure, that and an increasing un- entropy. And, yep. and all of that stuff, we can't know it. There's just not the capacity to know it. And I think the stuff that is unknown that we could potentially know about, I think it's potentiality. That part of the unknown. Because we can go out and find out stuff if we want to. That's stuff we, we can find actual information about and learn about and figure out how it works. And we have the potential there to get rid of pieces of the unknown. And that's the part that's limited by time and capacity because we can only do so much in a given day or year or decade or lifetime. Going back to trying to get it to one word. Potentiality. Potentiality. Okay. Potentially, we can fill in a lot of the gaps of our personal unknowns. Because that's what we're talking about here. We're not talking about humanity's unknowns. Right. We're talking about my unknowns Mm -hmm. or your unknowns or Jumbo Down the Street's unknowns. We can fill in pieces of that, and we have the potentiality to do so. We're limited by what information is available, how much time we have, how much capacity we have to understand it. Because I don't understand the math of quantum physics at all. How much energy we have. Hey, that too. Yeah. It's, it's, we're limited by our humanness. Mm-hmm. So there's always going to be unknowns. And we can make ourselves nuts knowing that all that stuff is out there that we would like to learn about and we can't. Or we can accept, okay, there's always stuff that is going to be unknown for whatever reason. And use, like you said, our critical thinking to find the unknowns that I can manage right now. Ooh, I I, I love that you put the word manage in there in the topic of the unknowable because we all, in in the, the unknown Instinctively, as primates, we all have some uh, amount of fear or at least anxiety anxiety associated with the unknowns of the future. I think so. Uh, I, I love that you put the word manage in it, manage in there because, yeah, there are some unknowns that I'm okay and able to manage and to carry, and there are others that I just don't address. Sometimes you can't. Sure. And sometimes and, and a big part of that balance thing that we always seem to fall back on is knowing what we can and what we can't. And where do we want to put our energy? Because like right. you said, we have a limited finite amount of energy every single day. So I can throw all my energy into productivity for me and the stuff I can work on or I can waste my time obsessing over all the things I can't. Yeah. And so sometimes we go there, let's be sure. honest, because we're human. But I recognize that sooner than I did. And I think one of the reasons we put a difference between unknown and unknowable, because unknown means we just don't know it yet. Yeah, there's still and hunger there. There's still hunger there for whatever reason. And unknowable is there's shit we're just never going to. We don't have the knowledge. Kind of resigned. Yeah. And it's not even resigned because we can think about it, you know, and maybe we'll be the one who has that spark that gives a little piece of knowledge that we find somewhere or learn about by reading about something else that gives us a little piece of that explanation of the unknowable. It's like, I don't know how the universe works in a lot of ways. I don't know, like you said, the existence of evil or why bad things happen to good people. I'm trying to think of them in terms of speed bumps, <laughs> as you said, with the trials of Joe, rather than as the universe is out to get me, because I could sure get that attitude. Sure. You know, but it isn't the universe is out to get me. Sometimes shit just happens. And you know that. And Most not, days. knowing that is part of managing those unknowns. Absolutely. It, it, it has to be, because otherwise you will make yourself nuts. Yeah. And I could make myself nuts very easily behind some of the unknowables. Sure. You know, and, and or the fact that I don't understand why people die when they do, when you think they have so much more to go on with, or the fact that for some reason one of the rooms in my house decided to 
burned down yesterday. You know, I don't need that chaos. I don't actively look for it, but it happens. Yep. You know, and like I said, I can make myself nuts over the whys and the wherefores, or I can look at the things. Okay, tomorrow I can meet with the insurance people. I can get the house get well, re rebuilt, and that's all stuff I can manage. What I want to look at is the energy involved with having a fire at a witch's house. <laughs> yeah. Makes you wonder, yeah. doesn't okay, it? so everything's been very thoroughly rinsed. We won't talk about water damage. No, we won't. But the reality is none of your children were hurt. Nope. You weren't hurt. Nope. None of the firemen were hurt. Nope. So at least There's if that. you're going to go through that kind of a trauma, it's there aren't stuff. hospitals and doctors and that sort of stuff exactly. involved. And so. it's stuff. And as I said to the kids, you can replace stuff. Right, right. You know, stuff is always freaking replaceable. I'm sorry it is. It may take longer than you may want, but stuff S is always replaceable. So, do we agree that we don't know what we don't know, and that is, by definition, the unknowable? I think so. Sometimes that's a safety valve for people. Sure. I think it's what keeps us from going off that crazy train. Yeah, sometimes I don't want to know. I don't want to know. You know, sometimes I'm better off... You know, not thinking in terms of all of the unknowables of the universe. Because you, you, you could come up, we each have our own list. Sure. And, you know, sometimes they overlap and sometimes they don't. But I could go down that road, usually at 2 a.m. <laughs> that's what's a good time. Right, yeah. You know, come on. Yeah, that's, that's what when our brains up. like to think. Yeah, that's what our brains like to think. That is a good way to describe that. And I can make myself nuts or I can accept that I'm a human and I am imperfect. And, and I some think, things are not meant to be known, and that's part of why we embrace the hedge. I think so. Yeah. We we have we are lucky as witches that we have maybe a smaller piece of unknowable in some ways because we know magic is real. And we know it works. Sure, yeah. So, we've already gotten belong that hurdle of disbelief or what have you yeah. that, that we were taught with. So if nothing else, as pagans, we understand that the known and unknowable are personal to each of us. I think so. And I think that's a good way to stop that discussion because we could get down some more. Sure. sure. And, and, and learning to accept that we're human with our unknowns and unknowables and still get out of bed in the morning. Uh, I That's still how. struggle with not being omniscient, but, you know, hey, hey. I, I'm a work in progress. And we all are, <laughs> you know, and when we recognize that we're not, you know, all those omnis, omniscient, omnipresent, mm -hmm. all of that, we suddenly discover that we have a lot more in common with humanity than we thought. Well, and for all that we all know, there's a lot of the same things that are unknowable to all of us. I think so. He does common value. So with that being said, may you find mirth and reference in all things. Be safe, be kind, and be loved. Witch stones are a divination tool we created as part of our practice that deals with what we call concrete stones, specific types and kinds of energy, and conceptual stones, Things and Ideas About Witchcraft, which can be read with either a seen or an unseen meaning. Recently, we have developed a set of oracle cards using this information. We would like to introduce you to one of these stones right now. In today's Witch Stone Spotlight, we'll be looking at the stone card for Stang and Broom. Concept stone cards focus on an aspect of the craft rather than a specific physical energy. The Stang in Broom is the fifth of eight physical concept stones that relate to the energy of actions or results. It displays a pictograph of a black Stang and a black broom with gray bristles surrounded by a gray and red border. The border being split gray over red tells us that this is a concept stone card. The border being gray over red or water over fire tells us that this card represents a physical concept. A stang is simply a forked stick stuck in the ground, which can act as a central point around which magic can turn, making it projective in nature. A broom, called a besom by some witches, 
traditionally was thought to call someone back to home after a flight to other realms, grounding the energy and thus is receptive in nature. The two pictured together on this stone remind those of us on the path that one cannot become caught up in the magical without ways to return to the mundane. It is a representation of that perfect balance between projective and receptive energies, which is the heart of magic and of the universe itself. Because the stang is involved with making magic and the broom with grounding, the energy of the stone is both projective and receptive. Both are involved with different types of movement. Because of its dual nature, it is associated with both the light and the dark halves of the year. The stang and broom stone card is associated with both the full and the dark or new moon. The stang and broom represents creativity and inspiration when reflecting on the element of fire. It represents flow of actions when reflecting on the element of water and represents magic to manifestation and energy to grounding when reflecting on the actions to results. The seen energy for the Stang and Broom stone card in a reading is physical travel, physical movement, and healthy movement. Both the Stang and the Broom are involved with movement, so it may mean physical travel or we may have an actual journey in our future. Physical movement is a reminder that the practice of witchcraft isn't just about reading and thinking, but actively doing rituals and spell work on a regular basis and might be a reminder for us to get up and do. And healthy movement may be confirmation that our walk along the path is moving in the right direction. The unseen energy for the Stang and Broomstone card in a reading is psychic travel, stagnant energy, and lacking boundaries. Psychic travel may mean that we are working well with the magical side of things and may be taking non-physical journeys of self-discovery in the near future. Stagnant energy may mean we've become caught up in a particular way of practicing and we might need to shake things up by trying something new or returning to something that we haven't practiced in a while. And lacking boundaries may mean we've lost sight of the hedge between the magical and the mundane, becoming too focused on either one or the other, or that we may need to just reset some personal boundaries between ourselves and someone else. Before we go, we would like to present you with a tip or trick or witchy hint. Just something to make your day go better, because we live in a mixture of the magical and the mundane. For this week's tip, trick, or witchy hint, I actually have Elizabeth here at the house, so we were going to talk to one together. And I noticed several times over the last few weeks that I had this odd habit of lighting a candle and I, I normally don't sleep with a candle lit, but I do have like a, a little hurricane sleeve that I use because I have an altar in my room. And it's it's my ancestor's altar. So there's pictures of Susie there. There's pictures of my grandma. There's pictures of my mom. And what I hadn't realized I was doing until last night as a witch was after some really troubled evenings this last few weeks, I've been lighting a candle and I've been putting it just where the light reflects and I can see. And predominantly lately, it's been my mom. So I'm putting a candle in front of a picture of my mom and then I lay down and go to sleep. And for those first few times that you toss and turn or wake up or blink or whatever, each time I look at that candle, what I'm seeing is a picture of my mom. And it's as if I am taking her, or in some evenings I do it with a picture of Susie, it's as if I am bringing them into my dreams with me. And when I am really feeling my lowest, if the last fading image that I have in my brain is a picture of my mom and a magic candle, 
that just seems to provide me with the most soothing, like they're right there, like getting a hug kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. um, have you t tried something like that? I don't know if I've tried that, but I get the value of a hug. Sometimes sure. when nothing else will work, if you hug a kid or get a hug, yourself if you need one mm -hmm. it makes it better for a minute it doesn't solve the world well and and for me predominantly with those two ladies those are the two ladies in the universe that i most would like a hug from and have both gone onward so uh for those that are mourning or what have you try this simple little put a candle in front of their face and take them to bed with you spell and I think that's great. And I'll just emphasize again that you put a hurricane lantern over it. Yep, because none absolutely. of us advocates leaving a flame unattended when doing candle magic of any variety. Sure. Because they're in by disaster. And sleeping is considered unattended because you are not paying attention, which yep. is what unattended means. And I will tell you now, homeowners insurance will not cover you if you leave burning candles and go out the door. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> but just the whole idea of reaching out to someone or something for comfort. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure you could do the same thing with a candle um, and having the light on your cross as a Christian. Oh, sure. Or having the, lar the, the light on the Star of David or, or whatever iconography that you'd like to use. It's just for me, it's sort of that subliminal last couple of frames of video that my eyes capture, and it seems to draw that right into my dreams. With me. And that's great because we can all use that kind of energy. And if nothing else, go hug somebody today. Everybody could use a hug. Be safe. Well, it looks like the coffee cups are empty for this week. We hope you join us again next Tuesday. But you can find us at our website, twoyoungcrones.com. That's the number two, Young Crones. We'd love to have you join our growing online Discord community. Check out our new Patreon presence. Just look for Young Crones Cafe. Through Patreon, you'll be able to make it to our Discord. We are also Young Crones Cafe on Twitter and Facebook. Until then, remember... We are witches who work with energies to affect change. We are believers in both imminent and transcendent divine. We are celebrants of the passage of the solar and lunar cycles. We are hedge walkers who pass back and forth between the worlds of the magical and the mundane. We are seekers of knowledge. And we are walkers of a spiritual tradition we call the path. So mote it be. So mote it be.